Hey there everybody, it's Mark Curley. I'm back with another video. Um, this is going to be one of these videos in which I try to teach more general tips about a certain topic, and today's topic is composition. Now, uh, when I first went off to college years ago, and I was very lucky to have uh, uh, the teacher, David Small, who became, became a kind of a mentor for me, uh, one of the things that he said I really needed to work on at that time was composition. Now, for those of you who don't really understand what is meant by composition, it's sort of the arrangement of items uh, within your uh, uh, frame so as to make it more pleasing to the eye. And sometimes when you're just starting out as an artist, you tend to say you have a sketch page, you know, a, a, a sketch pad and you've got a blank page. Uh, at least I would tend to draw something right in the middle and it would be sort of floating in this white space. And that, in a way, is not a composition. Um, it's just sort of a, a single drawing floating in the middle of your picture. A composition happens when you try to sort of carve the area into different shapes. Now what I'm going to do is uh, show you a sort of rough sketch of how I might have drawn the opening page of uh, the Brody's Ghost series. And uh, the basic uh, uh, topic of that was that we were establishing his room, Brody's room, uh, and he lives uh, in a very, you know, messy place. And, and the whole point of the picture was to show this guy is really messy. Uh, so uh, basically his bed is here and we see him uh, uh, asleep in his bed. And there's a window uh, over here on one side. And then what I could have done in terms of a composition was just to sort of uh, fill up the rest of the uh, floor area here with various kinds of clutter uh, that shows uh, how messy this guy is. And uh, that could have been it, basically, in terms of uh, my design for that picture. Let me go ahead and zoom in a little, actually. Sorry about this. All right, so that could have been my design for the cover. And, um, you know, there's nothing wrong with this in terms of a composition. Uh, it sort of works. But what happens is you end up with some very uh, basic, uh, fairly uninteresting shapes here. And, the, you know, composition is a tricky thing to talk about because uh, for one person they might say, well, those, you know, I don't see why are these shapes not interesting. What do you mean by interesting? And it becomes quite subjective uh, over time. But uh, uh, suffice to say, the final design that I went for ended up with uh, a, a rather more complicated uh, composition. Hang on and I'll bring that one in. All right, so here's how the picture ended up looking. And uh, as you can see, there's uh, uh, what I did is I took a lot of the sort of junk and garbage in his room and brought it forward uh, and uh, used um, sort of uh, areas of darkness to separate all of this clutter uh, from Brody. Now, this, is, this area of darkness thing is actually more about creating a sense of depth, but it also creates these sort of interesting shapes. And, um, you know, as the art instructors told me over the years, uh, the eye enjoys sort of uh, swimming through these different areas. And, um, you know, in the end, basically you're thinking about what is the point of the picture? The point of this picture is to show how messy his room is. And I hope you'll all agree that this one actually sort of strikes you as more of a messy room than this one would have. Um, just because, you know, the, the clutter is featured in a bigger way. Um, so hopefully that gives you some of the basic concepts of, of uh, how a uh, comic book creator or any artist um, begins to come up with a composition for a page. Let's move on to another one and kind of cover it in similar fashion. Okay, so there's a scene again in the first book where Brody uh, and the ghost Talia come to a, a temple. Um, and uh, it's sort of like a, an uh, ancient Japanese-looking temple, and um, I, again, I'm, I'm just doing rough sketches here to make a point, so I'm not going to uh, hold myself to too <laughs> high a standard of illustration here. Uh, but imagine that this is uh, the temple and uh, the steps leading up to it, and basically this is what we get uh, in terms of uh, uh, establishing a shot of uh, of our first view of this new location that's going to play uh, an important uh, part in the story. So I get my uh, uh, temple in here and then my characters uh, I'm actually rather fond of uh, um, putting characters right in the middle of the frame and uh, so uh, I know that a lot of people will tell you that's not a good idea to just drop something right into the middle of the page. I sort of like part of it to be right in the middle uh, as the, you know, the temple is and our character is. And then 
to have uh, other parts of it um, asymmetrical uh, and not so balanced. But uh, again, I'm trying to show you how uh, things might have been different and you know possibly less interesting. So let's say again that there's sort of different things here in the courtyard, um, and then we might have uh, in the distance uh, some uh, buildings like uh, skyscrapers. And uh, let, let us imagine that this was the way that I uh, first envisioned this scene. And then I can begin to kind of critique this approach a little bit. Um, I think in this case it is a little too much with everything right in the middle. Um, we've got our characters in the middle, we've got this building in the middle, uh, we've got a mirror image of, uh, say, the sides of the uh, building over here. Boy, I'm drawing and <laughs> doing some terrible drawing here today, guys. <laughs> this is a thumbnail sketch, you know, I'm like on purpose. Uh, I can do better than this, sure, if I want to. Uh, in any case, uh, I think it is a little too centrally uh, located everything in, in this picture. And one thing that would really bother me is the fact that all of these buildings are kind of reaching to a similar height. And then we have all this dead space right here. Uh, so this is, um, you know, sort of the do's and don'ts, I suppose I would say this is maybe a don't of composition. And uh, let us switch to the uh, real illustration, which is <laughs> hopefully qualifies as a do uh, in terms of how to do it. All right, so here we have the actual temple, and now that I look at it, I realize the shape is completely, the shape of the roof is completely different from the way I remembered it. But uh, in any case, you can see that I took uh, some of these centrally located elements and then began to play around with uh, like a big tower here that uh, is, of course, not perfectly balanced. There's a smaller tower or more distant tower over there. We get this sort of diagonal swoop of these power lines which I use a lot as a design element in the story, actually. Um, and then finally, the way that I did the buildings there is a little more irregular in, some, in terms of some of them being uh, higher than the others. Uh, and the, uh, this, again, carves out an interesting shape in the sky. Uh, you are, even when you're drawing realistically, you're thinking kind of in abstract terms in terms of shapes and um, you know what they call negative space and so forth. Um, so yeah, there's a, another lesson in uh, at least how I I approached composition for this page. Let's move on to another one. All right, now the first two that I showed you were these sort of splash page um, vertical uh, rectangles. This time we're dealing with more of a panoramic uh, or uh, horizontally uh, oriented panel, and uh, the idea of this scene in Brody's Ghost Book 3, Brody enters a shop uh, in which he finds the owner of the shop behind the counter talking on the phone. So I'm going to show you how I could have drawn this scene. Could have uh, done very much like I did with the opening um, page of uh, Brody's Ghost Book 1, just sort of draw a room, again, centrally located. Uh, we could have the doorway over here, and the uh, door is open. Brody is sort of coming in, and um, over here we could have the... Um, the counter, you know, what do you call that, where people pay for things? <laughs> you don't even know how to say that. The cashier area. And the guy's uh, sitting, kicking back in his uh, uh, chair, got his feet up on the table, talking on the phone. And then we could have a bunch of, uh, you know, uh, cabinets, tables, and whatnot, uh, where he, uh, the different items that are for sale uh, could be. And this could have been the design. So... I think you know where I'm headed with this. Uh, it's kind of flat. It's not a very exciting thing to look at. Again, we end up with some sort of dead space up here. Or, or, you know, maybe we'll put in a, a, a light fixture or something. But there is, you sort of feel like you're watching a play. You know what I mean? Like a stage play. And um, everything is set out for you maybe a little too neatly in a way that just looks sort of dead. And uh, I want to show you, again, what I did in the actual uh, book uh, to give quite a different effect. All right, so here's how the panel actually ended up being in the uh, final comic. Um, we sort of pulled the camera around, so to speak, uh, th so that we are, see this guy in the foreground talking on the phone, and we see Brody coming in in the background. Now, part of this is about establishing atmosphere, and I had this idea of this very dimly lit interior with a very brightly lit exterior, and that I was going to, you know, that kind of becomes the, the star of the show in this particular 
particular panel, giving you the feeling of having gone from the brightly lit exterior to the dark uh, den of this guy who's, uh, you know, it's a pawn shop or whatever. Uh, and um, uh, again, we end up with elements of composition here. We've taken him, we've moved him over uh, so that he sort of uh, breaks into the corner here and creates an interesting shape. Uh, Brody has been pushed back, and he's even creating a shape against the silhouette behind him. Unfortunately, the word balloons sort of block out a little bit of the windows there, but that, I tried to anticipate that in my design. And, uh, you know, m uh, all in all, I hope you'll agree that it feels less like a stage play, uh, where you're just sitting, seeing this um, set up uh, a little too perfectly in front of you and gives you a little more uh, feeling of atmosphere. Uh, and you can see that I uh, included a little sound effect here. Cree! <laughs> for opening up the, the door. I always love to add little sound effects. And of course, the, I like the idea of him being interrupting this guy in the middle of a conversation. Yeah, well, you should have asked if the factory was still making the ammo, dude. Should have asked me that before you bought the rifle. Uh... <laughs> A little, maybe he is from Brooklyn. Maybe I, I worked the Brooklyn guy into one of my comics. Can you believe it? Uh, anyway, uh, hopefully this gives you some sense of uh, a little more uh, composition stuff. I'm going to do one more that's kind of in a similar vein, and then we're going to do a final thing that uh, uh, comes at this topic in a different way. All right, so there's a scene uh, inside this pawn, pawn shop in which Brody and uh, Talia are uh, looking at the items inside this cabinet. I won't say any more because I don't want to give away any spoilers. But uh, this one, uh, I'm going to try to sort of point out the importance of uh, breaking the frame, uh, the edge of the panel. So uh, let's say that we've got our characters um, uh, right here and Brody is sort of leaning down and he's uh, looking at the stuff that's inside this cabinet here. I don't want to spend too much time trying to make this look great. This is just sort of actually a good way of showing you the sort of thumbnail-y, sketchy things that people uh, do, uh, you know, comic book creators do when they're just uh, getting started on planning something out and they don't, they don't want to commit too much time to it. Now, uh, Talia as a ghost is always floating, which uh, sort of makes for an interesting um, compositional thing all its own because she never needs to be just standing there she's always creating sort of an interesting shape uh, in depending on uh, what way she's floating in the air but anyway she's talking to him and they're looking at the uh, items inside this cabinet okay and uh, let's say that there's another cabinet right here we're trying to make things a little more three-dimensional and uh, so we get a cabinet here and maybe there's uh, another uh, table or something back here and uh, so, again, uh, with all of this, I don't want to say, hey, you know, this is wrong, never do this, always do something else. Uh, but I just, uh, I'm hoping to teach you certain things uh, about creating composition. So, if we've got all this stuff and none of it is touching the edge of the frame, uh, you end up not really creating uh, a bunch of shapes. Uh, you'll have one gigantic area of air here behind them and the big area of the floor. And somehow there's just something a little undramatic about this scene. Now what I want to show you is uh, the way that I did the final picture. I'm going to go ahead and pull this in. And you'll see that we, we, we moved in closer on the figures, right? So that we allow uh, her head to be cropped off by the top of the frame. His legs get cropped off at the bottom. Uh, by the Part of this gets cropped off. You get something in the foreground here. And you just end up with more interesting shapes that way. Um, it's hard to sort of, you know, put a... Uh, 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 an actual definition on this about what makes for an interesting shape versus what should, what doesn't. It's of course all a matter of opinion. Uh, you kind of know it when you see it, but uh, hopefully you would all agree that this uh, composition uh, is more pleasing to the eye than this one that again sort of has this uh, staged uh, feeling to it. Now I'm going to move on to... Uh, oh, actually I wanted to show you. Hang on just a second. I'm going to show you the way that I ended up uh, using this in the book because there's all these word balloons and it ends up being a, a little bit different because looking at this the way it is now it feels a little lopsided like the, all of the interest is over here and then we got this big blank space well I'm designing in anticipation of word balloons hang on I'll show you how it ended up in the book 
So yeah, one of the unfortunate uh, necessary evils of comic book storytelling is you have dialogue going on. You need sometimes to obscure your artwork with word balloons. Well, I knew that she was going to be speaking at length in this panel, and that's why I didn't put anything of great interest uh, in that one area. I knew it was all going to get just covered up uh, with word balloons anyway. Interestingly, though, I did, as you can see, uh, create this, this sort of rectangular shape here uh, that ends up being utterly obscured. It was kind of a waste of time. I don't even <laughs> know why. Why did I put the extra 15 minutes into doing that? Uh, it probably only took about two minutes anyway. But uh, So this uh, shows you how uh, in the, within the realm of comic book storytelling, your compositions do have to sort of take into account um, the word balloons that are to come. Now I want to move on to the last part of this video, which I think is going to be kind of interesting, in which we compare lots of different compositions um, that use basically the same elements. All right, so here's a panel from the very latest uh, Brody's Ghost, book four, in which we see uh, Brody walking along and uh, coming to this uh, bookstore. And um, in a way, this is kind of that, you know, I told you about the stagey theater style layout. This was is a kind of deliberately flat uh, image. Uh, and uh, sometimes you, you just want that effect, and that's what I wanted for this. Uh, I, I wanted the, the reader to just sort of observe the different rectangles, uh, the way they carve up the space, and create this feeling of stillness, right? It's sort of like a deliberately boring <laughs> looking scene, uh, just because of the pacing of the particular uh, part of the story. But anyway, I wanted to show you that having the character here, having all of this sort of um, darker, more interesting detail pushed over to one side, creates a, a slightly awkward uh, composition, I think. Um, and you feel, why is this space uh, so dead here? What are you trying to achieve with that? And the truth is, uh, if we were to move uh, that guy over a little bit like this, I think it would sort of balance things out a little more. It would be uh, more pleasing to the eye. Again, all of this is sort of up to personal opinion. So some of you may say, well, actually, I like this version uh, better. And, there, you know, who's to say what's right and what's wrong? But um, for my personal tastes, if I were laying out this panel with just these elements... Um, this is probably closer to what I would end up doing. In fact, I might push him a little further uh, over to one side. Uh, let me show you a few other things that are based on this same uh, page. Now here we have um, the same scene, but imagining that all we had was this sort of more squarish panel, and for whatever reason we wanted uh, the, the Koyama coffee shop to take up most, most of the space. My problem with this actually, and it goes beyond composition, it's just a matter of clarity. Uh, putting him right here, uh, he, it's hard to see his silhouette against uh, the background. He's sort of disappearing into the building, and if you sort of squint your eyes, he truly does sort of disappear, and you don't see him there almost. So, uh, forced to, again, work within these constraints, I would probably bring him back a little uh, so that he has a clear silhouette and is not uh, blending into the background. So I don't know if that even counts as composition, but just a little sort of drawing design tip that you uh, mostly are going for clarity when it comes to storytelling. You want uh, the reader to immediately see uh, the various elements. Now I have one uh, final uh, version of this to, to talk about yet another um, uh, aspect of composition. Okay, so here's one last one in which we see um, uh, the frame with most of it being taken up by this wall. And um, there's something a little awkward about this composition for me. It's all personal taste, of course, but uh, I feel that he it's not decisive enough. It's like he's, he's almost in the middle, uh, or he's almost a little bit off to one side, uh, but he's neither of those things, and as such, it, 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 it irritates me. I want the artist to have made a bolder choice. Uh, and a similar kind of a thing is happening here. We have a sliver of building uh, giving us a sense that he's uh, about to enter into a new area here, at least one that's more interesting than the wall. Um, but we haven't really given very much of that. It's a sliver that is very nearly the same width as uh, this sliver of road down here. And again, it just creates this kind of perfect square back there that's not very interesting to look at. And uh, uh, given uh, the ability to change the shape of the frame, um, I would probably do something a little more like this, in which we... Uh, uh, get uh, 
a, a wider area here, and then we can sort of compare the different shapes uh, as these different rectangles kind of carve up the area. Now, uh, people will talk about the golden mean and these sort of ways of calculating where uh, everything should be so that it looks good, and I'm sure there's a lot of validity to that. I am one of these people who rebels against this idea of uh, sort of codifying the uh, the rules of uh, composition. I would rather it be uh, more instinctual, and and so I don't really sit down and make measurements and so forth. But you know, sure enough, there probably is some sort of uh, percentage of territory type calculation that you can make um, that would justify this composition that I feel is um, a, a better one than this. Um, but anyway, that was my attempt to uh, make a video about composition. Let me know what you thought. These videos in which I just sort of impart uh, my uh, knowledge to my uh, the best of my abilities, um, they do not tend to get as many views as my regular videos. But I notice in the uh, comments section people will tend to say things like, Oh, this I find actually more useful than your step-by-step, line-by-line videos. So uh, I was encouraged to, to do another one of these, but um, suffice to say, next week I will be back with one of my more traditional uh, videos uh, showing you how to draw something. Haven't decided what it's going to be yet, but uh, we will figure that out um, uh, in time for next week's video. But for now, let me go ahead and lay down this pencil that I didn't even use, <laughs> except to point at things. <laughs> I want to thank you again for watching, and I'll be back with another one real soon.